to Florida. Uh, he just came back from L.A. He was a part of the roast host by Jeff Ross. Very witty, very funny. Give it up for Hugh Cameron! So far, what's going on, folks? Hell yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Keep it going for all these very funny people. Lauren, Kai, Jander, fantastic. I gotta say, I was sitting there listening to Lauren's bit, and I was thinking about, like, this is what a gay ghost looks like, right? Y'all don't know what a gay ghost looks like. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna tell you what a gay ghost would do, okay? Because if I was a sassy-ass gay ghost, I'm gonna sneak in your bedroom at, like, 3 in the morning, and I'm gonna start whispering in your wife's ear, like, honey, purple is not your color. <laughs> like, honey, you need to stop wearing purple. And, and then I think, like, the next morning, I might just, like, get rid of all of your sensible shoes and replace them with nothing less than a three-inch heel. Because I want to see you work for it when you go to the gym in the morning on that elliptical. Like, I want to know what that's like. I want to see the pain. I want to see you step that whole game up. And when you come home from the gym with those three broken ankles that you just earned, I'm going to have the whole fucking house rearranged. I'm going to have that furniture moving around like that scene in Matilda where everything was just going all kind of crazy. And then you just start seeing like a, a little purple pencil skirt just sashaying down into the kitchen and it lands in the garbage because that purple don't look good on you, bitch. Wow, I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time doing a headline movie. So I'm excited. Thanks, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, like she said, my name is you. Carrie, and I'm going to be your token homosexual this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just so we get this out of the way, my preferred pronouns are he, him, they, and faggot. <laughs> Listen, I know this toxic masculinity is quite a thing, but y'all are not allowed that joke, okay? Y'all are not allowed that joke. I got like two Chick-fil-A's over here that are just fucking dying over this shit. Trump support it. No, no. Nah, he told me it's Tifa. Okay, what is it? Hold up. What's it say? I want gay married couples to be able to protect their marijuana plants with guns. That's the fucking word. Yes. Me too. Me too. Fuck. How do I overcome that? The guy's shirt has a better set than me. Is this stage? What the fuck, dude? That's great. I love it. Well, there's a couple of inequalities us homos are born with, okay, guys? Now that we're all friends, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We can sniff out another fact from a mile away and another Chick-fil-A here, okay? <laughs> we're like basset hounds that get put up for adoption when we turn 15. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay, she's going to fuck me that kid. Fuck him. Fuck that dog, too. <laughs> Listen, it's better to get put to sleep, right? It's so much better to get put to sleep. I hated the name Hugh Carey growing up, guys. I fucking hated it so much because in high school, everybody there used to call me Hugh Cherry. <laughs> Don't all! This I was right! <laughs> Not only did I know my way around the penis, but I was both the bottom and the top of my class, okay? <laughs> Absolutely 100%. All I'm trying to say is I could totally suck my way to China. The road there was paved with dicks, folks. <laughs> All the way to China. All the way to China. I could probably push it to Bangkok if I was in the middle of okay? But I have to bring my chapstick because that MSG will take a toll on your lips, honey. Yes, it will. It's salty, so y'all. It's just salty. So I ain't lying. I ain't gonna lie. I have a bit of a bastion of the bok choy. I am. And thanks to China's one child policy, it is literally raining men over there. Raining men. Stamp my passport with all those cute little Asian dicks. Like, <laughs> Y'all are great. Love this vibe. Y'all drink. Where are my alcoholics at? Okay, that's a little bit too much excitement. Like, fuck that liver, too. Fuck the dog. Fuck the gay kid. Fuck that little. Where's my heroin addict? Yeah, Hugh Cherry, I've got to give credit where credit's due. 
Uh, aside from being like a big confidence booster and skosh racist, my dad really had to come up with a nickname, guys. He was like an excellent nickname if you ever was a confidence booster. It's what brought me on this stage tonight. And if you guys think Roseanne on Ambien was racist, <laughs> you should have saw my dad on the Budweiser, okay? He was like a mix between Dog the Bounty Hunter and Mel Gibson. And he had all of the redeeming qualities of Dolph the Bounty Hunter and Mel Gibson. This bitch had a country ass mullet, a duct tape recliner in our garage, and he's the only person I know that's been permanently banned from every auto zone in the state of Florida. Who the fuck gets banned from auto zone, y'all? He went in for wire blades, came out with a warrant. Like, what the fuck happened? This is such Florida man shit. And before he went in there, I'm like, I had this conversation with him. I'm like, Dad, you cannot use Marlboro Miles to pay for shit. <laughs> he don't even smoke, y'all. I don't know where the fuck he got that shit from. And what's funny is we're from Jersey. Like, we're not. Okay, this makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. I don't know what happens when you drive down that 94 corridor or whatever. Fuck, you pass that Mason-Dixon line, it's like, fuck, it tits out, clits out, we're getting fuck crazy in Florida. <laughs> this is the truth, y'all, that's why I fucking love it here. There's just like an amalgamation of chaos at all times. It's my favorite, it's my favorite. This guy over here. I love this dude, this is great. So, a friend of mine recently opened up one of those Etsy shops, right? And she's been promoting the hell out of this thing all over social media to the point it was like getting on everybody's nerves. And she kept sending me these messages. She's like, oh, you check out my shop, check out my shop. And I'm like, fine, all right, I'll check out your shop. So I pull up her website, and I start browsing around, and I see she only sells two types of products. Yoni eggs, which I don't know if y'all know what those are. It's those egg-shaped crystals you shove up your cooter. It's a real thing, y'all. It is an egg-shaped crystal you shove up your cooter to align your pussy chakra or some shit. She sold yoni eggs and herbal vaginal steams. That's it. That's all she sold, folks. And I was not 100% sure how to feel about any of this. Like, I've been called a pussy my entire life, but at no point has anyone actually ever insinuated that I possess a bowl with a needed baby. Did <laughs> my dad put you up in this shit, bitch? Like, what? <laughs> also, I'm gay, but I'm not, like, vaping gay, right? Like, there's levels of gay. There's so many levels of gay. Like, there's gay, Elton John gay, Mike Pence gay, <laughs> this side of the room gets. My radar's pinging up here, folks. Get some heavy hits. And then there's vaping gay, right? Like, I am nowhere near those levels of gay. Absolutely not. So I was really confused, like, what would make her think I am the kind of person that wants this type of product, right? However, ever since I've been using those vaginal scenes, bitch, my face! has never looked so good. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is shining. Shining. There is a dewy glow going on down here, folks. A very dewy glow. Step your tank game up, sir. It's 2022. It's all about hygiene. I'll get you one the show. Yeah, I bought some of them vaginal seams, and I bought a couple of them yoni eggs, too. Mm-hmm. In fact, I got a couple of them in right now. <laughs> yes, I do. I can feel my pelvic floor strengthening as I speak. It's like a nod at the end of a balloon, right? Listen, I'm going to let y'all sit on that for a moment, all right? I like to paint a picture. I'm an artiste. So like Kai said, uh, I actually I did just get back from LA. Anybody here from LA? Good! 
Cause that place is a fucking dump! <laughs> Y'all, LA is trash. Do not let the TV lie to you. LA is just Pasto County with like 10 buildings in the back. <laughs> it fucking is. It's a mess. It's riddled with heroin. And it's like a whole bunch of just homeless people. I swear to God, as soon as I landed, I walked out of the terminal, walked into the parking lot at the airport. I was immediately hooked on heroin. Shout out to that side of the room. <laughs> yeah, and he's looking at me like, I don't know, I feel like you might have had that problem before you landed in LA, dude. No, this is intermittent fasting. I eat on the same schedule as a ball python, all right? I come out of my burrow every three days and emerge to nourish my soul with a little sandwich. Actually, no, it's drugs. It's definitely drugs. It used to be drugs. See, he's like, I was fucking right. He looks like a fucking drug addict. It's okay. I keep picking on him. Um, so yeah, it's interesting because when I lived in LA, I had one thing that came to mind to me that I was so glad that I had spent copious amounts of hours playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and for those of you that know, know, that fucking map, oh, perfect. Perfect. It is perfect. It really gave me a good lay of the land. Like, I figured out where I was, and when I ran in my car, I knew right where to go to go down all the hooks I could ever do. I was mowing them down in the Nissan Leaf, y'all. It was just a trail of eyelashes and heels all the way down the sunset All the way. And they say video games aren't realistic. And that is true to some degree. To some degree. But I'm going to tell you right now, after I ran all the bitches over, no stars. No stars. None. They don't give a shit in LA. They're all hooked on heroin. So I went out one night. I took the car out. I was having a little hankering for a snack. So I decided I was going to go to the Jack in the Box. Another fucking bullshit artistry story. That place is another dump. Don't let them lie to you, it's not good. So I'm going there, I'm going to try it out, I'm trying to get the, the whole LA experience. And I swear to God, I really was taken aback because their hookers out there, they, they're inventive, right? Like, I'm used to St. Pete hookers that walk around with a little bit of shame, you know? Like, just kind of a little apprehensive. Not these bitches! Oh, no, 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 no. These hookers are walking in the middle of the street, y'all. They are unionized out there. <laughs> I watched this hooker go up to the crosswalk and clock in with her employee ID number. <laughs> I'm like, damn, does this shit come with benefits too? Holy shit, I don't got fucking health insurance. <laughs> oh man, I fucking love LA. It's still trash. It was interesting. Um, but yeah, LA's just a dump. There's nothing else to really say about that. Uh, I actually just broke up with my husband of 12 years. Oh. Woo! Fuck yeah! She knows my hair on the bitch over here knows what's up. We're gonna shoot up after the show, baby. No, it's not bad. It was amicable. Because, like, you know, all relationships, you have a lot of ups, you have a lot of downs. Ours mostly had downs. Like, 47 chromosomes worth of downs. He was not the sharpest tool in the shed, folks. He was not. So we decided, like, we're no longer in love. And he we had the serious conversation. He's like, all right, well, it's time to separate. And I just want you to know a couple of things. I don't think I'm gay anymore. I think I'm bisexual and polyamorous. To which I responded, well, I appreciate what you're telling me. I think you're just a Libra and also a hoe. <laughs> And by the sounds of it, there's been a lot of people here victimized by some hoish Libra behavior. My girl right here, she knows. Real quick question. Where are my Libras at? Where are my hoes at? Fucking same sound every goddamn time. Every motherfucking time. It is without a doubt. I, I swear to God, Libras, they're like a relentless builder workshop that has to have like every hole and orifice in their body stuffed at all times. Like, I feel like the day that, that God decided he was gonna make Libras and keep his pimp hand strong and bitch smack humanity, all the Libras dug and they fucking swamp right back. Like, not today, God. No, 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 no. 
It's actually in the Bible. If you look it up, it's in Hobbitica 69, 69. <laughs> Read your Bible. It's in there. <laughs> so yeah, we had that serious conversation, and he's like, all right, whatever, I'm poly. So he's now in a six-way polyamorous relationship. Tell me about it. So he's living down in Bradenton with what I call daddy daycare. <laughs> Because this bitch is 50 years old, and he's got a house full of children, and they're like 30. And I, I don't get it. Like, do y'all know what polyamory is? Let me, just, let me just fill you in real quick. So polyamory is just a fancy word for when a group of really ugly people pretend to all love each other. <laughs> Facts, yo. Who has ever seen a good-looking polycule? Show them to me. You might have one. One. There might be one good little one in there that they're all trying to fuck. Like swimming like ants on a mound. Just like a gelatinous ball of bangs and social justice. Purple hair. You know it's true. I know it's true. I'll show you all some pictures of... Okay, you want to know some shit? They have a collective noun. They refer to themselves as the horde. <laughs> the horde. And I'm not sure if I want to puke or am like inspired. <laughs> it's like I want to be part of a group thing and like be part of this collective, but really it's like the board. And they're just going around slowly, just assimilating anybody willing to write in the bottom. And that's just how it works. And he's 50. And the interesting thing to me is, like, I can't even barely hold a six-way conversation, let alone six-way penetration. <laughs> For real, y'all. Like, I can barely, like, look at six people at once in this audience, right? <laughs> That's 36 if you follow the distributed property. <laughs> Got some math nerds in the front. They're like, yeah, I knew mean, one day I was going to be fucking six people, and now I know how many holes I can take at once. I gotta figure that out, the fucking schematics of that disaster. Oh, Lord. So, now that I am separated from my husband, we were together for 12 years. So, when we got together, it was before social media kind of like really took off. So, Facebook wasn't around, dating apps weren't around. But now that I'm single, I've decided I'm gonna put my little hot ass on Woo! the dating apps. Oh, Thank you. And it's the heroin. It's the heroin, yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing, I just shoot up and I'm like, let me get on hinge real quick. She knows because we've been talking. She's trying to flip me. She's like, if I could just get that really skinny, emaciated fag to look at my vagina. You know what? We'll try. One time. Fuck it. Let's just do it now. Get up here and let's just go hang out. I'm not that interested. <laughs> but I will take the hair on. <laughs> That's funny because I actually was never a heroin addict. I like pills. And I was a pill person. I was definitely a pill person. Uh, they say America runs on Duncan, and that might be true for America, but Pinellas County specifically. <laughs> Pinellas County runs on White Claw, American Spirit, and Percocet. It do. It do. It really do. It really be doing that. So I'm on the dating apps now because I'm trying to find me a man. Um, but I'm not like wanting just like a regular man. Like I'm into manly men, right? Like I don't want a, like a construction worker. I want like I want like a I want to say a tow truck driver. Like I want a man that like repossesses shit. Like. You might repossess that Nissan Leaf with blood stains on it from hooks I ran over. But like, I want some big dick energy. Like, I need me a man that like repossesses 747 job. Just like bust into the fucking cabin door on a Spirit Airlines. Like, all right, bitch, get the fuck out of here. This is mine now. I'm gonna make it home because she's making me a fucking banana bread. I love that Spirit is just trash. It's always gonna be trash. So back to the day. 
little tinge there. Um, so I'm on the dating apps again, and one thing I realized, like, I'm actually not really interested in a man, I say that, but I'm enjoying being single. But I will occasionally go on and do a little window shopping. I like to do a little browsing, see which men are on clearance. <laughs> Got some Maxinesas in the audience tonight, I don't know. There's something about being over 30 and gay and single that just, the universe doesn't like. Right? It just it does not mesh, it doesn't vibe. Um, because the thing is, is, like when you're on Hinge over 30 and you're a gay dude, you get like, this is what you get, okay? You get a mix between Disney gays, nerdy cosplay gays, and gays that lack symmetry on their face. I don't know which one y'all think I am, but you're probably right. So it's interesting, so I go on there and I realize like Hinge has this thing called your most compatible. And I'm sure y'all heard about it. So you pull it up and it's like, here's what we think wants to fuck you. <laughs> and my friends always say, oh Hugh, you shouldn't be down on yourself. You're a catch, you know, you're great. You deserve all the love in the world. And I always tell them, well that's nice, thank you so much, but you're not fucking me. Um, I really appreciate that. But the one thing that came up on my Hinge, and listen, I know I'm not gonna know you bad. Right? Like, I'm, I look like Tommy Pickles with AIDS at best. <laughs> but the beasts of burden that were coming up on my phone were fucking offensive. It was so offensive. Like, I'm thinking about it now, I kind of just want to cry. Because it can't go up from here, right? Like, you can't, I don't see it going this way. <laughs> So the first guy that comes up, I shit you not, this fucking asshole was wearing an eye patch in his profile picture. <laughs> Yo, it was not even medically necessary. <laughs> this motherfucker was dressed like a pirate in his profile picture. And I was offended not for the eye patch, but for his lack of fucking effort. <laughs> like, bitch, if you're gonna fulfill my ultimate pirate fetish fantasy, uh, you're gonna need to have a wooden leg, a hook in your arm, and a boat in the background of that profile bitch, bitch. I wanna see all of the signs of scurvy really setting deep into your skin, right? Take that fucking crusty ass cosplay shit down the street. This is the Krabby Patty. <laughs> Dave Jones, you pop it open in this locker, and you can take that right on back down to the fucking chum bucket plank. Because I ain't fucking with no Gasparilla ass fucking pirate, bitch. Yes! I love the yesification out there. That's great. Mm, mm, mm. So, as you know, I do have friends that are into weird shit. Like I said, my friend was trying to get me to buy these. For real, like the Yoni thing. That one, that was a bit of a fucking realization. But I have friends that are into like a lot of really weird shit, like aside from like like conspiracy theories. Where's my conspiracy theorists? Okay. <laughs> Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. We're simpatico. So my thing with conspiracy theories is I will entertain the shit out of whatever you decide you want to feed me. But that don't mean I'm gonna believe it, right? Like, I wanna believe that the earth is flat. I really do, but I've yet to find someone to truly convince me that it's flat. So I have one of these friends that's like one of those COVID conspiracy theorists, right? Y'all know the COVID conspiracy people? So the best thing about the COVID conspiracy is that all that I'm being told is that the government created COVID, right? So is my, listen, can, we'll have a conversation after we do the heroin, we can figure it out, we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> so I want to believe that the government did make COVID because if there's anything that the government really is good at is taxing a bitch and killing a bitch. That's, that's what America does best. But the problem with COVID is that it doesn't really have its shit together because it'd just be out here killing like anybody for no reason. Like it'd be, just, it'd be killing everybody. Like it, it, it kind of just like there's an old person. Oh, it's gonna go after the old people. Oh, it's going after the young people. It's going after the fat people. It's going after the fat people. It's going after the fat people. 
still going after the fat people. And I was like, that's just a little too messy, because like, I feel like our government would have like a target demographic for any kind of virus that they're gonna make, right? Which is why I like to one-up all my conspiracy theory friends and throw some bullshit back into their face. And that's when I decided that if there was ever a virus that was gonna be made by the government, it would be AIDS. AIDS? AIDS has to have been made by the fucking government, y'all. Cause AIDS knew what it wanted. <laughs> it knew exactly what it wanted. It went into the gay community hot. It was like the military looking for oil, y'all. And <laughs> it's true, it's true. And they were there to cease all means of production at all costs. And I find that really interesting too because then I have to like tell myself, well that can't be true because like if you're trying to get rid of and kill all the gay people, you gotta kill the straight people. Cause y'all the ones keep fucking making us. <laughs> If on like the day that Ronald Reagan got elected, right, he just busts down the door in the CIA and he's like, all right, fellas, we gotta do something about all this butt fucking fashion. <laughs> of which I kind of concur. Cause the 80s fashion choices fucking sucks. <laughs> and honestly, like if AIDS is the price my people had to pay for leg warmers and shoulder pads, Consider the debt paid. <laughs> also, I'm not really sure what Africa had to fucking do with it, but somehow they got entangled in this situation. They did. <laughs> but there's not a lot, like, okay, so Reagan got elected in 1980. There's not a lot of terrible things that came out of the 80s. There's, like, two good things that did come out of the 80s, right? Cocaine and the Golden Girls. <laughs> Thank you for being my friends. Fuck yeah, man. Cocaine and the Golden Girls. And I'm gonna tell you right now, even the Golden Girls sell victim shoulder pads. <laughs> Y'all ever seen Dorothy's Born Act just sprinting around Miami looking like a linebacker? She did, y'all. Even her fucking nightgown had shoulder pads in it. She looked like a knight in a gown. <laughs> She did. I was at all times just waiting for her to tackle Blanche's ass for that last piece of cheesecake. <laughs> I really did. But uh, yeah, so the 80s, eh, cool, whatever. So the other conspiracy in reference to COVID that I love so much is that apparently if you get the vaccinations, it's gonna lower your vibration. Did you guys hear about that? Did you know you have a vibration, sir? Well, it's being lowered, okay? <laughs> it is being lowered. Because my friend's like, oh my God, Hugh, if you get the COVID vaccines, not only is your vibration going to be lower, but like, Joe Biden's going to go to track you everywhere you go. <laughs> it's like, first of all, Cheryl, <laughs> do you think I give a fuck about my vibration? Do you really think I give a fuck about I was in a bathroom at a gay bar last night doing cocaine with a black drag queen by the name of Velveeta Fudge. <laughs> if anything, I'm trying to lower my vibration. I'm not trying to get to the fifth dimension. I'm not trying to ascend to a higher realm. Fuck that place. I like it here where reality is. That's my favorite place. <laughs> Velveeta Fudge is not a real drag queen. I actually saw an ad on YouTube one day. I was doing acid, and someone was making fudge with Velveeta. I know, right? Who the fuck thought that was like monetizable? But I watched it. <laughs> so the thing is, is like you know, if there are side effects to the COVID shot. Good, good, because I'm gonna tell you right now, I look forward to setting up my appointment for my future structured settlement with J.G. Wentworth, baby. <laughs> I do, I do, this is my 
millennial be so feeling over, y'all. Hop on the train while you can, bitch. Cause when my arms start falling off, <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> Baby, I'm on my 19th booster right now. 19, 19. I got the Pfizer, the Moderna, the one that stops your period. <laughs> I did, y'all, I did. Oh, you know what, guys? You have been fucking fantastic. Are you ready for your next comic? Yeah! Fucking A, man. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming out. Keep that energy going for your next comic. And have a good night. Thank you.